Hello everyone and welcome back to Sophie Loves 10 and today I'm here with my October wrap up. In October I read 11 books, um, book slash play slash one comic and listen to an audible um, and I think all in all, cons all things considered, I had quite a good reading month. I usually read more 15 to 17-ish books I believe per month um, but they are, there's a, quite a few chunky ones in here and they're also for my course um, and I'll start with what's on top of the pile I'm just gonna m m wait my make my way down the first one is a play which I read for part of my course and this is Earthquakes in London by Mark Bartlett this is really interesting I'm not sure exactly how I felt about it a lot of people in my class didn't like it but we're discussing it on Monday so I'll find out then <laughs> what everyone thought about the book the play um, and this is about an earthquake set in London, as the title would allude to. Um, and it is all about different families and how they all link in together. Um, this, these different little family units all link into one big family and how um, dysfunctional they are. And it's quite interesting um, to read. It's all very erratic during the play, um, the book of the play. Um, it's everything is... everything's happening at 10 million miles at once and that's part of the idea behind the play it's meant to be like an earthquake in itself so I think I rated this about three stars on Goodreads um, I would get my Goodreads up but my phone has um, decided to crash on me and my Goodreads app is not really working at the moment so I will need to plan that again next month I'm gonna be better next month this one I read was something for my own leisure fun time and that is it was on my October reads as well October to be read and this is um, the architect of song by A.G. Howard who wrote the Splinter series which is a series based now in Wonderland I really enjoyed this um, a lot in fact I gave this five stars this is basically about a lady it's all set in 1800s maybe I'm not entirely sure um, but it's set about a woman who is deaf and she lip reads what people say her parents her dad passed away when she was younger and her mum just passed away and she finds out about um, a man that loves her and there's all very very weird story but there's a ghost involved um, there's a weird relationship it's all very very nice the descriptions in A.G. Howard's novels I don't think you can beat them when it comes to young adult she really really knows how to describe things so you can actually see it playing out in front of you which I think was absolutely fantastic and I flew through this book in about three sittings because her books are really really easy to demolish this one I have is a book one of the books of my course which is my optional module called Queer Now and this is all about um, the LGBT trans spectrum and at the moment we're focusing more on trans gender um, so we had to read this one which is Trans a Memoir by Juliet Jacks and this is all about Juliet Jacks who is a transgender woman and about her life and how it came to be how it, how she came around to fully becoming a woman um, if that is if if you have to be have a sex change biologically to become a woman if that is the case but this is another discussion for another time um, and it's really really interesting I really enjoyed it I some of the bits within my class again we discussed it and some bits within it not sure how we felt there was a lots of facts mixed in with her story um, I quite liked that I think it brought everything into perspective a little bit more but some of my class members didn't but you win some, you lose some. I think I gave this four stars. It's um, something that I don't usually read. I don't usually read memoirs. I don't usually re read factual books. But I did enjoy this. And I enjoyed getting a perspective from a person that I wouldn't usually read about. So I enjoyed this a lot. And she did a talk in foils last week. But I missed it, unfortunately. But if you want to hear more about her story, pick up this book. It's now in paperback as well. <laughs> and it's cheaper. I read was a... Um, graphic novel and I picked this up in El Elcaf which was the East London comic book convention I can't remember what all the words stand for but anyway and it was really interesting I met a woman sorry called Rachel Smith and she wrote quite a few 
graphic novels and this one tickled my fancy the most and this is artificial flowers and this is about um a artist who is living in the city away from home and she has a brother to stay and her brother is a pyromaniac he's obsessed with fire and it's really interesting i really enjoyed this gave it four and a half stars and i thought this was a really nice graphic novel i like the artwork a lot as i mentioned in the haul when i bought it the reason why i bought it was because the artwork was so fantastic and she even drew a picture for me inside which i thought was amazing so really enjoyed this if you like graphic novels or comic books um pick this one up because rachel's really really good she has a really nice a, a lot of people sometimes i feel lack in the story plot or the art but rachel does both really really well and by herself and i have something that i'm not really sure how i feel i gave it three stars but not sure and this is the return of the young prince by ag romanas and this isn't by the original author of The Young Prince. And I did enjoy it. However, it's basically, the whole concept is the prince is in a car with a man. And they're talking about life and the meaning of life. So I didn't think, I, not, I wouldn't call it a children's book anymore. Although the first book was more of a children's book with pictures in. This does have some pictures, but it's very, very, f like, deep, <laughs> basically. And it's very prominent throughout the book that whoever wrote it was religious. And indeed, he is religious. And you can tell, you can really tell that everything that he says has religious context behind it. And I felt like it was being chucked at me a little bit much. And maybe a little bit opinionated in the, that fact. But if you're into religious books go for it but I didn't know that this was going to be advertised as a religious content so I don't think I would have picked it up if it was because I'm not really into reading something that I and finding out that it's not what I thought it was I thought it was just, just going to be a children's story so not one for me unfortunately however the next one was a five star read and again it was my module clear now and this is Trumpet by Jackie Kay this is based on a true story but this is all fictional in the book about a jazz player called Joss Moody and he gets married and he is only found out, obviously his wife knows, but, uh, but his son and everyone else only finds out that he is actually bi biologically a she at his death. And it's all the repercussions from that. We have loads of different perspectives in this book from different people. Um, the villain in the book is called Sophie, of course, um, and she's a journalist trying to get Joss's son to write down um, everything about his dad and how he must have been a horrible person to do it and uh, how it's been framed. It was in the 50s, I believe this is set, 50s to the 90s, and I thought it was a fantastic story, very emotive, got me really angry at some parts, felt really, really upset. But the best thing about this is, is we never ever hear from Joss's point of view because at the beginning he's dead. So but you feel so much for the person. I feel like I know this person, Joss. Um, the forward's also done by Ali Smith. Um, the introduction is done by Ali Smith, and um, the it's for Caroline Duffy as well. So that when I saw that, I thought, this, this is going to be a good book. This is going to be a good one. And lo and behold, it was a five-star read, and I super enjoyed this. If you want to read a book um, that is about family life and uh, living in the 60s, uh, 50s and as Joss is a black male living in the 50s and the repercussions of that um, really really interesting book to read I highly highly recommend this one so far it's my favourite from that module can you tell um, the next one I read for my own pleasure and this is Caroline Batten um, nearly almost somebody I met Caroline at a book event and she's really really nice she said when I read this she might send me the next one, so maybe I'll contact her, because this was a really, really good book. I really enjoyed this. It it was nice, because it's... I don't like using the term chick flicky, but it was like a kind of chick flicky book, as um, it was nice not to have to think about things that was happening within the book, and just to read it and enjoy it. I like to call them holiday books, so we'll, we'll call this a holiday book. Um, but this is about a... Uh, I don't even know how to start. There's so many things that happen. Two people move to a small town when the one of the characters 
aunt, great aunt dies and they live together. They used to be ballerinas and one has a very, we find out about a past which is a bit mm, iffy and the other one also has a past and she's labelled the broken ballerina because she used to play ballet and then her ankle got defunct, something happened to her uncle, ankle and she couldn't dance anymore and she goes to this house and the aunt that used to live there was a she just describes a witch throughout the whole book and um, Libby the second character does a spell to try and get her perfect man and we're trying to guess throughout most of the book who is her perfect man and we find out and things aren't as easy as they think as they seem because we have some other backstories about journalists and stuff like that and I won't tell you everything because it was really good but I gave this five stars and I would would recommend buying this book as well if you want a holiday style read. I put two together because I have some things to say about them but not so much because I'm not really into play reading that much but I read two other plays for my course and this is um, Human Animals by Steph Smith and The Initiate by Alexandra Wood. Um, firstly Human Animals is very very interesting I'd love to see it it's probably my favorite play so far that we've read on the course um, it is basically about he, what would happen if the animals all became infected and we decided to just kill them all because we can and all of the animals start getting killed and the endings really really gruesome like I, I kind of still plays in my mind now so if you want to read a gruesome interesting story about um, I suppose dystopian England then read this because it was good and The Initiate by Alexandra Wood Alexandra is actually my teacher for this course which is really interesting she's really really lovely and we uh, learnt about this which is a, about a Somalian man who lives in England and he goes to Somalia to try and stop the pirates over there from killing or whatever they're planning to do to the British couple it is based on a true story but nothing ever came of the true story just as it was just a a thing online somewhere that she found so I thought this was an interesting take on that story and um, I would have loved to see it but unfortunately it's not showing anymore but that's the initiate so if you want to play about that kind of thing that's that then something that I listened to on Audible, we just got a sneak peek of it there. I'm a little bit ashamed of this, but at the same time, I'm not really sure if I care if I should be ashamed of what I read because it's up to me what I listen to and read. But I had this phrases and I thought, you know what, I'll listen to it. The, the voices were a little bit annoying, that's why it put me off before, but I got over it and it was okay in the end. And this is Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer, which is a Twilight retelling. We have, I can't even remember the names of the characters, but they're hilarious. Beerfoot Swan and Edith Cullen. And I, I think I actually like this more than Twilight. Um, I was a Twilight fan when it first came out, but I liked the books. I liked the world that Stephanie created, um, but I wasn't a, like a massive Twilight fan. Like I didn't buy any like t-shirts that said Edward team Edward or team Jacob or whatever like that um, I just thought the story was quite good that she told and life and death is another is a take on it however we have got a lot of stereotypes which I thought that she would not do so much if we had the characters change so if the vampire is now the girl and the boy is now the human but yeah that's my only issue with it I think I gave this three stars, but I did like it as a story, as a basis of a, just a basic of the story. I did enjoy it. So. And the last one that I read, I think I did alright this week, this uh, this week, this month, was something that I really excited to read. I didn't read it for a long time because I was anticipating it so much that I was like, no, when should I read it? I want it, like a good time to read it. My friend at uni said to me, so if you have to read it, it's amazing. I was sitting on the bus and I was like, oh, this is so good. And I was like, okay, I'll read it. I'll pick it up. And this is A, Torch Gets the Night by Sabbath to Here. And oh my God, <laughs> this is really, really good. Um, plot twists. I mean, Sabbath does it really, really well. <laughs> and if you haven't read the first one, 
and Ember in the Ashes, I'm not going to say anything because it will ruin it for you, but if you haven't read Ember in the Ashes, I think you should read it and then pick up this one possibly because it's really, really good. And I'm not sure if there's going to be any more in the series, but I'd really quite like another one because this didn't satisfy my needs of Sabbath's writing enough. So that is it. Um, just quickly, the books that I'm reading at the moment, I've got two on the go, although I'm going to have to read a third, get a third on the go as well, which is a little bit crazy. I haven't done that in a while for one of my modules. Um, but the first one I'm reading and still reading and keep stopping and haven't started again in ages because I'm, I'm not that engrossed in it anymore. But that is The Days and Nights of London Now is told by those who love it, hate it, live it, left it and long for it, Londoners by Craig Taylor. I always read that and I actually think the book's just called Londoners. So it's Londoners by Craig Taylor. Um, this is all different stories that Craig... Um, made into a book about different people in London basically so I thought I'd help with my course which is about London um, and I am like halfway through it mate not even that and I've stopped uh, because it's all it's short stories it's short um, interviews with people so I can pick up as and when I want to and as and when I want some inspiration so I'm reading that and the other one which I haven't been picking up and I'm gonna as soon as I finish filming this video I'm probably gonna finish it because I'm really really enjoying it and I ha don't know what has been sitting on my bookcase and I haven't read it and this is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor and this is about a girl who locks herself in her room not room in her apartment because Sixie, that that's her place where she lives, and because she has massive urges to kill people, and for a job, um, if you live in the apartment, there's only so much you can do from home, really. Is she's she decides to be a webcam girl, so she talks to guys online, guys girls online about different things, and strips for them, etc., etc. Uh, I shall, I'm sure you all know what a webcam girl is. And it's really, really interesting. There's little bits within the book. I'll try and find one. We've got three stories, four stories within here, about different people. So we've got Jeremy, who's the person who works for Parcels. I can't remember what the name is right now. Parcel guy. We've got Anne, who's a little girl. And we've got her uncle, Michael. And those are the different stories happening within the book. So they're all linked somehow and you'll find out if you read this book. But they have different like bits here. So we've got um, this one, Age Play. So before, sometimes before she speaks to people on webcam and she describes what she's doing on webcam, she'll tell us about different things. So Age Play is when people act like a different age who they um, are. So sometimes people like to have a like a daddy and his little girl sexual kind of things which I really creeped me out but um yeah so she explains it all really nicely within this novel really interesting really dark really enjoying it and that is all sorry it was such a long video I'm gonna try and cut this down a little bit so you're gonna have to sit through me talking too much but I hope you enjoyed it I'm gonna have a November TBR but I think it's mainly going to be books that I haven't read during October and November because I've got October and November, October and the month before that because I've got um, piles of books to read from those months that I haven't managed to get to. So I'm going to try. I'm really going to try my best. And I will see you all soon. We'll speak in the comments as per usual. Bye everyone.